Hot Wheels! Hot Wheels. As kids, we all either had them, or wished we had them. Either one of our friends or family had them. They're Hot Wheels. It's very easy to just think of Hot Wheels as little kids' toys, a kids' game. But we are here today to tell you that Hot Wheels Unleashed gives you the nostalgia of driving around in whichever vehicle you so desire in the oh so recognizable orange and blue track pieces. But also to tell you that it's not just a simple mindless driver. You want to find out why? Keep watching. Leave a comment below, like the video, do whatever you have to. Let's just jump into it. Hot Wheels! Half the fun of Hot Wheels is collecting all of them. And there is a solid, solid range of vehicles. With over 60 to collect. And there's a few DLC cars that I'm assuming are going to come out in the future. Looks like there's a bit of a season pass going on. There are many types of cars from different packs of Hot Wheels with food trucks, race cars, work vehicles, the lot. You can collect all of them. You can drive them. Starting the game, it gives you three of them. The favourite one that I got at the start was a little toaster car. It has lots of boost. It's not very fast. And you'll find that all the different cars can compete in some way because... Like I said, while it has low speed and low acceleration, it has really good braking, and it's got a lot of boost. So as you can imagine from this, most of the cars seem to have advantages and disadvantages, which means it's up to the driver who uses the car to determine who might win a race. You just gotta drive differently. Some might have high speed, but really bad drifting, and you gotta work with what you got. It's kind of refreshing in a way, actually, where it's more based on how you drive rather than just potentially someone who's played the game for longer than you having a better car. Obviously there are some better cars, but that's like a lot later in the game and you know, the starter cars can still compete. Now how do you unlock more cars you're asking? Well, you earn coins throughout the game and there's a main story mode called Hot Wheels City Rumble, which is the game's story mode. It feeds you a narrative of some monsters or perhaps some monster trucks taking over the city. And you have to complete races, time trials, and more to take back over the city. There are four rarities of cars to find. Common, rare, legendary, and super treasure hunt vehicles. Some vehicles such as the Buns of Steel come as a common car with low stats, but you can actually upgrade them to gain better stats and make them more viable. Well, it is a racing game, so we care about how it drives. Let me tell you, driving is simple with steering, acceleration, drifting, and boost your only real options. But this does not mean that all races are simple. It really does have a lot going for it. You feel fast, very, very fast. Drifting is very solid and lets you gain boosts as well as take corners at lightning pace. And while racing in easy mode makes it extremely difficult to lose, trust me, the CPU literally slows down for you if you fall behind in easy mode, which means no matter how bad you are, you will always catch up. Taking that into account though, a badly timed drift can and will send you straight into a wall and most likely off an edge if there is a slight slant on the track at all. And going for any kind of airtime is really important that you get that right. Because not landing on your wheels can send you careening in a multitude of different directions, including flipping over multiple times and landing on your wheels and driving off completely fine. It's an arcade racer. We could do things like that. Takeoffs and landings are important though, as resetting to track, choose up a good 5 seconds letting the opposition go past you, which is a lot of time, especially in a harder difficulty race. On the flip side of easy CPU racing, there are time trials in single player, which are actually quite challenging at first with basic cars and require concise drive to beat the set out times. There are even some at the end with some of the best cars in our opinion that 
I I just can't beat them. It's brutal just how concise you have to be. But most of them do become easier over time when you get an all-round good stats car. As you can imagine, multiplayer is very hectic. It's an arcade racer. <laughs> There's gonna be lots of crashing, lots of cars flying off the track. Lots of weird things happening, but it still feels very rewarding to win a race. At the current time though, the servers are a little lacking with a lot of the funny stuff coming from lag and cars just pinging around the track and randomly running into each other, causing some absolute mayhem. But I'm sure it'll improve over time. Ooh, and the other thing that's really cool is that the maps are kind of to scale with as if someone was actually playing with Hot Wheels. The track you're racing on is placed in an atmosphere that are very large compared to you. Like for example, in the basement, there's a pool table in there, I believe, and you're like just a little car at the base of the, one of the legs of the table. And thus it is with everything. The main maps take you to places like the basement, skate park, college campus, a skyscraper, and a garage. The other really cool thing when you race in basement in the city takeover rumble mode, it actually places you in your basement. So decking out the basement how you want is important if you want to be racing on a track that looks really good when you're on the basement. But hold on a second there, Jimmy. What do you mean your basement? Well, you may have noticed earlier on the menu, there was an option for basement. And this is where you can unlock a lot of customizable things such as walls, floors, paintings, extra objects, colors. Nah, all the colors are already there. But you can add all of these hot <laughs> features and pieces to a basement that you own and a track editor. There are four little sections of the basement that you can deck out. The living room, kitchen, cup space, and hobby, they're all yours. Change the colors. Change the setup, make it your own. And like we said before, when you do that, whenever you load into a basement race in the story mode, it will be your basement. So wear it proud. All right, track editor. Track editor is obviously a place where you can edit your tracks and it's a bit, I mean, I'm sure it's great, but it does take a while to get used to, and it's a bit iffy. We couldn't really execute what we wanted to when we used it, and it was very frustrating, and after an hour and a half of trying, we actually just gave up. But that's beside the point. Track Editor lets you manipulate the pieces of track into your own design. It starts by placing down a basic piece that the player can manipulate in many different ways, pitching it upwards, translating it left and right, up and down, twisting it sideways. The best thing is that the pieces automatically connect so you don't have to worry about fiddling around with it too much to find the perfect balance to create, you know, a track that works. You start with the start line and have to connect the track back up to the start line. Make sure to leave space for it. We found that out the hard way. Unless it's in circuit mode, which is obviously those big long races where you have a start line, finish line, for about four minutes. But otherwise, connect it back up to the start, create your lap, make it truly yours. All the extras such as speed boosts, walls, magnetic tracks, and spider traps can be modified in after the basic track has been made if you would like to make some changes. It should also be worth mentioning that going around a loop in any game mode, if you don't have sufficient speed, you will fall off. So probably best to add a little speed boost in there or make it challenging and make the player build up their own boost. But anyway, it's good fun and you can test the track, make sure it all works. Bob's your uncle. It's good to go. Challenge your friends on it. Take it online. See how it goes. To be sure, to be sure, this is a simple game, but it's still fun and keeps it entertaining as best as it can. This one is for lovers of Hot Wheels and arcade racers, and perhaps some collectors. There are enough rewards to collect and race to keep you entertained for a solid chunk of time. And making your own tracks to challenge others on is always a blast. There is even a chance for them to show up in online races. Overall, 
A great experience. So, rather than just eyeballing a number, we've got our little review tool here. And it goes like this, alright? The visual design of the game is excellent. The sound design is very good. The gameplay is very fun. The story mode does feel a little long, but it keeps you entertained for a long time. And the overall fun is it is quite fun, but obviously with arcade racers, if you're there for a little bit of fun, then it'll keep you entertained for a good four or five hours. Love racing, this game's for you. And after all of that, we have given it an 8.3 out of 10. All the tool has anyway, but we're gonna run with it. 8.3 out of 10. Oh yeah. So yeah, shirt change. <laughs> That's all from me today. This has been Hot Wheels. I hope you enjoyed. If you want to read the review, I've got a link in the description down below, which is also the website that has the tool for uh, giving the review a number, 8.3 out of 10. Go follow me on there, I guess. If you want to read all the other reviews, join the Discord. Vote for what games you want to see next. We deal in new games, but we can do old ones too. Just jump in the Discord, join the community. Give this video a like. If you liked it anyway, if you hated it, then I'm deeply sorry. I'll do better next time. But yes, I love all of you citizens. Just a pure, deep love from the heart. My shirt's gone red because of all the love. Arrivederci, citizens. I'll get you later.